Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is October 17th, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, right now, we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Varashton joining. Uh, I have Mark here on the agenda, but uh, we'll remove him for now and add him back. If he does show up, uh, anyone else who joins will welcome as always. And from now, we'll get, go over the agenda. So uh, on the agenda, I have contributor spotlight notes, some updates for Hacktoberfest, uh, one of the recent blog posts we've had, a quick update on Jenkins elections, notes on the automated changelog generator that had issues this past week, uh, information about the upcoming LTS release, which will happen at the end of October. Uh, just a note about a video uh, that is a recording from the Linux Foundation OS Summit that Bruno participated in recently. Uh, going over some recent work done on Jenkins.io. And then if we have time and we get to it, uh, just some discussion that we can t we're continuing on from last session, but um, not important. So if we need to sacrifice something at the end of the day, that'll be the what uh, is not talked about. Anything else to put on the agenda, Bruno, or does that cover topics for you? Nothing from my side. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, great. Uh, so, so just getting started, Contributor Spotlight. Right now we're featuring Adrien Le Charpentier. Very nice to have Adrien spotlighted. Uh, Adrian's a software engineer. He's uh, the reason the plugin health scores are a, a thing uh, at this point. So really excited to be featuring Adrian. And uh, next up, we'll have Devin Nussbaum. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, we have enough interviews or uh, spotlights at this point. Uh, and by the end of this month, that we'll be able to publish throughout the end of the year, which is really exciting. Um, we did discuss during the advocacy and outreach meeting earlier today that uh, since the project usually takes a two-week break at the end of the year uh, for holidays and just to reset, we're also going to follow that pattern here for the Contributor Spotlight uh, just to make sure that we don't have such a lower visibility uh, for whoever might be published at that point in time. We want to keep that energy up and we want to give everyone the same opportunity to be seen and heard and recognized that everyone else gets. So uh, as it stands by the end of October, we'll have enough to get through November and into December for that. So. Um, thanks again to everyone for their participation, for their collaboration, and for their willingness to be part of the project. It's really exciting to be able to share our appreciation and thanks and highlight the hard work that goes into making Jenkins what it is. Uh, next up, so Hacktoberfest is in full swing. We're now halfway through the month, a little bit over that. Uh, and we've got a lot of activity in Jenkins.io, which is great to see. We've had a lot of users uh, submit, or we've had a handful of users submitting work, uh, which is great. It goes to help with the UI screenshot updates. Um, the UI was updated last year for stuff like Manage Jenkins and some of the terminology, uh, along with a lot of the UI modernization and updates that have been done by folks like Jan Fotcheck and Tim Jacome. So we want to make sure that these are included. Uh, so thanks to all the users and contributors for uh, providing that work. Uh, we've also had a couple other examples of work. Um, just to update some of the documentation and code examples. So again, thanks to all the hard work that people have been doing, and we look forward to continuing for the next couple weeks, at the very least, hopefully longer. Um, there is a list of issues in the Jenkins Jira if you're interested in anything else outside of Jenkins.io. Um, if you're curious about working on Jenkins itself, Jenkins Core, et cetera, et cetera, there are things to look at there. Um, and then uh, Darren Pope has been... Uh, providing a video, uh, I think they're, they're actually live streams um, weekly for Hacktoberfest topics. So uh, things like maintaining a plugin, uh, modernizing Jenkins plugins, um, and these are extensions to the Improve a Plugin tutorial, which is great. Um, I've included a couple of links here. You can check them out, and they're all on the CloudBees TV YouTube channel. And there's multiple uh, more. There's a handful more there that I didn't include. Um, but, and they're ongoing as well throughout the month of October. So if you're interested or curious, you can try these links out to see if those uh, are what you're looking for. If not, there are plenty more there to review. Yeah, um, I think it's on, no, I know, it's on uh, Monday and Wednesday, so it's twice a week. Yes, and okay. It, it, it's pretty interesting. Uh, so I, I did not attend all of them, but I attended the two sessions this week. And it was about updating plugins, so using uh, open rewrites and following the improved plugin tutorial and so on. It's pretty well informative, and I'm wondering, even if that was not the goal, if that could be used or referenced someday 
um, in the Jenkins IO website um, just to help with improving plugins or something like that. Maybe that's not the right format. I don't know. But um, I found it pretty much uh, informative, if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. um, whatever. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea, Bruno, and I think it do could definitely be applied to the documentation depending on what we're looking at. I know the Improve a Plugin uh, tutorial has the video up from Mark and Darren going through that process. So I think including more information there wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Maybe we could include a new section or create a new, maybe even a new section in the tutorials uh, documentation that includes video tutorials or something along those lines or... Um, yeah, this is really valuable information, and I think especially with stuff like the open rewrite, with the processes they're describing when it comes to modernizing and maintaining plugins, I think those are really valuable, especially for newer developers and people that are getting started with Jenkins. Um, yep. One of the you know big factors for Jenkins being as great as it is is the plugin ecosystem, and encouraging people to work with that and in, even create their own is a big, big deal. So we should encourage that with this information. Indeed. I know for a fact that uh, not all people uh, want to learn via video. Some people just hate watching videos in order to get information. Some people prefer some documentation, written documentation, not videos. But it could be a nice plus in some places or others. Uh, I think Darren recently... Um, how would I call that? Subtitled? his own videos uh, in Jenkins.io. You know, some of his videos about doing yeah. some, some things with Jenkins were just there with nothing. And I think the first step he took was um, getting back the subtitles and putting them into um, a spoiler or something like that. So I don't know if it went up to the end, if the documentation has been updated and is visible for everyone, but that's maybe a first step, just getting the subtitles and now and then some people could just try and review that and make that into something that is useful, not just a transcript of what was told during the, the video. Yeah, and um, yeah, and like exactly what you're saying, Darren did submit the transcripts of the videos into the um, uh, .io repository. I haven't gone through them yet. They're very much exactly what's being said in the video, so there does need yeah. to be a little bit of editing there, of course. But um, yeah, it, it's something that's on my to-do list for sure to go through and review and see because uh, I want to try and figure out whether or not it'd be worth having the full transcript with some editing there or if it would make more sense to break it down into steps. Um, but I feel that you might lose some things in the process if you just translate it into step Maybe, by step. Maybe, but, but we have to have some action labels or something. You know, yeah. just reading this transcript is fine, but not really helpful. I think people, when they come in on Jenkins.io to get some information, some tutorials on how to, they want to have something that, list of things to do and in the end you know what um, you'll have as takeaways so just a transcript of the video even if the video is well scripted you know you know why uh, it's there you know there will be some takeaways it would be better uh, you know it would be a lot of work for you to uh, remodel that into something usable but at least it's better it's a beginning yeah and at the end of the day it just reinforces what's going on and um, you know, I, I know that I've seen feedback that the videos may not be as helpful when you're looking for something very specific on a page, for instance. Yes. Um, it's not the same sort of, let me find this instance. It's more work, it's more tedious, and you're ultimately not necessarily getting what you're looking for. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree. Having the text just openly stating what's happening is is really nice to have and, and better for just in the moment use case. So yeah. Yeah, definitely something. Um, yeah, I've I've been it's been on my to do list for a little bit now. It's just been preoccupied with change log stuff, uh, the release yeah. <laughs> other things. But yeah, no, it's definitely something I want to make sure is part of the um, site before the end of the year at the very least, if not sooner. So, yep. Uh, anything else on Hectoberfest? No, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so next up, so we have uh, we've only had one new blog post since our last meeting, and that was the Alpha Omega Foundation grant announcement. Um, this is amazing. Thank you so much to Alpha Omega for the grant. Uh, the grant allows uh, us to work on the content security policy for Jenkins.io. Um, what it is is a three month contract for Shlomo Dahan to work on the content security policy and make the improvements that we're looking to include. Uh, this is being led by 
Bruno and Basil Crow. So yeah, uh, most of the work is led by um, Basil. I'm just the link between the Alpha Omega Foundation and uh, uh, the guys working doing the the grunt work. So uh, I, no, I, I'm not leading anything, but you know we use a title like this. And uh, by the way, it's Shlomo, but it's also Yaroslav um, Afenkin who is working um, with Basil and Shlomo. Uh, to fix everything. Um, last time I attended one of their meetings, I understood that Shlomo is doing the work mostly on the plugins, and Yaroslav is doing the work on the Jenkins core. Okay, great, good to know. Thank you for the additional context, Bruno. Um, yeah, we hadn't, uh, I hadn't, I couldn't remember if that was officially announced or anything yet. I know we didn't have a blog post for that specifically, but. Um, I wasn't sure if that was part of it just yet. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not in the blog post. I think the blog post predates the uh, contract or whatever between Alpha Omega and Yaroslav. But I saw his first pull request. I I don't know if the contract was signed, but I know he's already working. <laughs> for, yeah. Yeah. So. Great. Awesome. No, that's, that's even better to have Yaroslav included in all this, too. Um, Shlomo and Yaroslav are both doing the work to enhance the content security security policy. We want to acknowledge that and make sure they get their um, their praise accordingly. And uh, yeah, and there will be progress reports shared with Alpha Omega throughout the duration of the project. Maybe yep. potentially blog posts that we share on on Jenkins.io. But uh, priority number one yep. is just getting those stories to Alpha Omega. So yes, if you could have some blog posts or from time to time, that would be cool to share where we are now. Um, the way the Alpha Omega Foundation decided we should report is pretty funny, at least to me. Uh, it's a GitHub uh, repo, and you have to make pull requests to let them know where what your progress is. So you're supposed to do one pull request per month to let them know the progress. Hmm. And it, yeah, it's funny. We have quite a few projects for 2024, so each of them has... Uh, subdirectory in the repo and yeah I, I like it um, remembers me of um, a CFP for a conference in Portugal where you had to submit your proposal thanks to a GitHub repo also that's funny when developers talk to developers yeah there's always a different method than you would think there is it's really funny cool um, any other notes on the content security policy stuff Bruno or no I just wanted to let you know that all is going great for the time being. Uh, I think we already have four uh, plugins that were released with uh, CSP uh, corrections. We also had some old PRs in Jenkins Core that had been developed, for example, by uh, Daniel Beck, uh, but that had been abandoned because nobody had the time to review them. And uh, these days, Yaroslav Shlomo and Basil are reviving them, uh, reviewing them, and incorporating them into the Jenkins core. So all is going pretty well, I would say. They haven't found their um, cruise uh, speed yet, sir. but uh, that will come. Yeah, and just to point out the timeline here, this is only a couple of weeks old now, and they've already done yes. that much work and made that many improvements in such a short time span. So the rate is great. Um, there wasn't this ramp up. They've just, just boom, started right going. So you're right. And, uh, they are using ATI, ATH as the first low hanging fruit. You know, whenever the ATH test, uh, will pass, uh, we'll know that we have made quite a good progress. And in the first week they went from 360 something errors to 80, I think something like that. So major improvement in such a small amount of time. Congrats to the whole team. That's really exciting. And that's really great. I mean, that's a huge change right then and there. So mm -hmm. just very tangible and fantastic work being done. And it's great to see. So thanks to everyone working on this project. Thanks to Shlomo and Yaroslav for doing all this work and for uh, just coming on board to do this. Thanks very much, Bruno. Um, moving on to Jenkins elections. So voter registration is still open until October 31st. So the end of this month, um, if you're curious about the candidates, we do have, uh, the candidate statements blog post and the information is also in the voter registration announcement. 
Uh, if you want to join, make sure you navigate to the Jenkins Election Voter 2024 group. If you have not joined yet, there will be a button here that says join. Um, you need to have an account on community.jenkins.io. Um, but if you've contributed to Jenkins in the last year, you are a part of this. We want you to be able to uh, be a part of the voter process. So uh, feel free to register here. If you have questions, there's also an election committee group that you can submit questions, concerns to. Uh, and we have, at this point in time, 70 people registered, which is good. We'd love to get more, but uh, we're doing pretty well so far. And uh, the last couple of years, we haven't had elections due to the lack of nominations. So we are looking forward to the process this year. Uh, earlier this week, for the automated weekly change log generator, there was a they had some issues going on where it wasn't generating the full content. Uh, so this week's weekly change log had to be done manually by myself and Mark. So uh, we were able to take care of that, though. We got the change log published, and there were a couple issues. Uh, or there was an, um, yeah, uh, this user was able to submit the fix for the change log generator. Tim Jacome was able to verify and uh, prove everything. Uh, and Mark confirmed that the 2.482 automated change log looks like it's being generated properly. So. Uh, we'll continue to monitor for any issues, but things look like they're back to working properly again. Uh, next up on the agenda, so we have the next LTS release is going to happen at the end of the month on October 30th. This will be the new baseline of 2.479.1. Uh, Mark, wait, is the release lead. I've created the changelog and upgrade guide for it and submitted a pull request here. Um, I've gotten some review already from Mark and some other writers, so we do have some good uh, feedback getting sent there, um, but more is always better. We have plenty of time between now and the release to get that uh, reviewed and updated if any changes need to be made. So please, by uh, if you have time to take a look, by all means, um, any feedback is welcome and I'm happy to work on it further and refine everything as long as it is correct and makes sense. Um, this is a big change. It's going to include the fact that Java 17 is going to be the baseline requirement Java version for Jenkins from here on out. Um, it also includes the upgrade to Spring Security 6, Spring Framework 6, and Jakarta EE 9. Um, we've included both backporting tickets because there was a handful of things that needed to be done uh, between the original LTS baseline decision and now. So all of those have been included. And the upgrade guide is going to have a bunch of information and details about uh, the Java 17 update, what kind of steps need to be taken. Uh, and there was a handful of tickets that had been submitted to the Jenkins JIRA. Uh, Basil Crow submitted a pinned comment on one of the tickets about the process and how to resolve this if you're using the Environment Injector plugin. So uh, specifically, that information has been included as well. Um, and then there's other updates for stuff like the LDAP plugin, the CAS plugin, um, server container updates, all sorts of stuff. Any details that you might need for what you need to do to prepare are included in the upgrade guide. And it's a, it's a big release. There's been a lot of work being done in the background for these things specifically. Um, so thanks to the entire developer team, the infra team, everyone that's been involved in the process of uh, updating these things and getting them to be um, the the right uh, solution and, and the right version and everything for the, for the baseline and for the release. Uh, next up, I just wanted to note that, uh, so we had, or we had, the Linux Foundation had their OS summit in the last couple of weeks, and uh, there were some mini summits around that, and Bruno actually gave a talk to, uh, about revamping the Jenkins tutorials. This is the result of the Google Summer of Code project from last year that we've talked about, uh, about using Docker Compose in the tutorials, revamping them to make them easier. Um, they talked about the challenges they had in the original tutorials, why that was a challenge, what kind of complications that might have been bringing to people experiencing the tutorials, uh, and what they've done to revamp them, why that makes so much more sense, why that makes it easier for a user coming into the tutorial, and just uh, how Docker Compose has helped with that process. So uh, thank you very, very much, Bruno, for uh, giving that talk, being that uh, representative for the tutorials and for Jenkins. That's great. Oh. Thank you, Kevin. And by the way, I should have hired you. You presented that so much better than I did <laughs> during the presentation, whatever. And I hope I will be able to finalize my blog post regarding this very subject one of these days. 
looking forward to it, but no rush, no worries there. I think we've been in evangelicizing it a lot and, um, yeah. it's just, it's a lot of great work that's been done. And this is a, you know, uh, a very long time coming in terms of when this process and this project started to now, and it's just great to see it, um, being celebrated and acknowledged so, so much. Yeah. And I, I'm still using it and I think people are uh, using it also. I had a look earlier today and I saw 26,000 uh, downloads of our images. So some people are using it. I'm not downloading it all that by myself. Uh, even <laughs> if whenever I can, you know, I tell people, oh, maybe you should try that. Uh, that could be helpful. Um, this week, for example, I was giving a lecture at the local university. Um, I was supposed to talk about GitLab, but I couldn't help it. I just gave them the link to the quick start tutorials and showed them how easy it is to start Jenkins uh, compared to GitLab, for example. Of course, these are not the same products. You can't compare oranges to apples, but whatever. This made starting Jenkins so much easier. I'm grateful for um, Damien to have the idea and for all the team to have allowed us to do so. So, of course, Ashutosh Saxena, the Jenkins contributor during GSOC, but also all the team who gave me some tips and helped me go to the end of this project. I think that's not a major asset for Jenkins, but that's something usable that has helped and will help newcomers to the Jenkins project. You don't have much to set up in order to start with Jenkins thanks to this project. Okay, I'm still talking too much. I love this project. You guessed it. I love it. I like the enthusiasm. And uh, I think I think you're selling a short bird. I think lowering the bar for entry in terms of what you need to do and what you need to work through and accomplish to get to a working point of Jenkins yeah. is huge. I mean, if you have to go through these steps and there's an issue along the way and, you know, the community is very responsive, but if there's an issue that you don't get a response for, or let's say you're doing it when there's not anyone available to help, it can be very challenging to then go back and, you know, go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You've like yes. taken that away essentially by providing an easier way to get started with Jenkins. And that's hugely invaluable. Um, that just like everything else is that much easier and more accessible after the fact. And that's really the goal. Uh, make Jenkins as accessible as it is, provide that that entry point that people are looking for. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, cool. Anything else on that, Bruno? No, thank you, Gibby. Okay, just making sure. Uh, so we're coming up towards the end of the session, so I want to make sure we talk about some of the recent work done on Jenkins.io. There's been a couple things that have been improvements and um new things to look at for pull requests. So uh, this first item here, automatic image compression and pull requests, this is something that Alex Brandes recently implemented. Um, so it's an action that will automatically compress images within a PR once they're added. Um, so this is, I found out this week, this is a non-blocking issue if there is an error or if something isn't compressed. Um, we should still encourage users to compress their images prior to submission. Uh, this is a way to catch anything that isn't already compressed or that could be compressed further. So this is great. This is helpful for not only the image guidelines, but also just the weight of a Jenkins page in the process of including new, uh, especially, you know, uh, the Hacktoberfest work of people adding new screenshots. This is great. This helps make life a lot easier for everyone involved. And um, one step is easily noticeable. Compressing an image is not the end of the world and uh, shouldn't be something that blocks from one from getting their work submitted. So this is a great way to counteract that and account for that sort of thing. Um, again, I'm still encouraging users and contributors to do that compression themselves. Um, but I mean, I can take an image that's been compressed and compress it further. There's always an opportunity for improvement sort of thing. Um, but yeah, thanks to Alex for implementing this and uh, actually running it for a lot of images that hadn't been compressed already. So that was very helpful. Uh, next up, there was, uh, so Darren Pope had suggested adding a banner to the last uh, LTS release, the 2.462.3 LTS changelog, um, just to once again note that the end of life for Java 11 is coming. So Mark took the initiative to add that. So thanks to Mark for adding that. Um, it includes the fact that Java 17 and Java 21 are the way of the future and indicates that it's going to happen the next release. 
Uh, we also included a link to the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan so that if people want some background on why this is end of life, they have that context now. Uh, so thanks to Mark and Darren for that. Uh, I submitted a couple more pull requests for the update of instance usage. This is pretty small. Chris Stern, thank you again for the review uh, and approval. This was uh, just merged earlier today. Um, I do have a separate one for the security pages, but we need security review for that. So we're just waiting on them, but um, we'll see what they say, provided there's no issues there, that'll be okay. If they come back and say there need to be some other adjustments made, I can make those and we'll take care of all that. No problem there. Uh, and then lastly, um, Alan Bergewitz has submitted a pull request recently for updating the WebSocket configuration uh, Apache documentation. So this is an issue that he had opened up and wanted to submit a, a PR to fix that and update that documentation. So uh, myself and Mark Wade have both reviewed and approved it, but we would like someone with some Apache knowledge to just confirm that everything looks good. Um, so there are a couple of folks, Stefan Merrill, and I forget who else was mentioned, but um, yeah, if anyone has time to review and, and just confirm, deny that, that would be great. Uh, worst case scenario, it's something that we can approve and take care of later. Um, yeah, everything looks good from outside of that perspective. Um, just again, thanks to everyone for the ongoing work, Hacktoberfest participants for their contribute contributions and their continued work. And it's been really great interacting with uh, all the users just trying to understand and uh, get a handle on how Jenkins works and how GitHub works, which is always a fun journey. But yeah, that takes, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up now. Um, again, this is just some ongoing discussion that we can have uh, and might be more relevant after the actual October LTS. So uh, we'll table that for now. And uh, yeah, we'll finish up the recording here. It'll be available in 24 to 48 hours. It'll be posted on community.jenkins.io. And uh, until next time, take care, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.